Welcome to Outrageous. We're here today with Jane and Donna, a lesbian couple. And we also have their furry friends here as well. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, I have JaneUnchained.com, which is a social media news outlet for animal rights and the vegan, compassionate, cruelty-free lifestyle. We're at the Wild Bird Fund in New York City um, because uh, we found a sick pigeon just before Christmas time. And uh, this is the place you come when you find wildlife that's not well on the streets of New York. And I do that with her as well as I have that snarky vegan girl, which is just a snarky take on um, the vegan lifestyle. All right, let's talk about bees. Or maybe we should just talk about the birds and the bees? Uh, no, we're gonna talk about bees because we're gonna talk about honey. And then tell us a little bit about your Facebook Live show that you're doing now. Yeah, okay. well, you know, every day we were making lunch at around 12.30, we both work out of the home and we said, you know what, Facebook, you can go live. Why don't we show people what we're making so instead of just having lunch, we're spreading the word about compassion. And you know, there's a lot of folks who just responded. I got response, we both did, from people who aren't activists, who aren't vegans, but they love the idea of a cooking show around noon. Maybe they're sneaking off at work to watch it, putting on their earbuds and watching it at work. And uh, we just started getting a lot of response. So that we decided to do it Monday through Friday because we make lunch Monday through Friday. I wanna show the ingredients very quickly. This is what we well, put together, go. yes. And Delicious. now we're gonna see it coming out of the oven. Wow, these are baked. People want to know that it's very easy. You can make quick, fast, easy, stress-free vegan meals in the kitchen. It's not, you know, it's it's not like your cooking show that you would see on television. It's more fun in the kitchen, and here's what you can whip up in 15 minutes and enjoy and have a plant-based, healthy lunch. There's no mistakes. Yeah. You drop something, well, Oops. that's what people do when they're <laughs> cooking lunch at home. You know, we have a lot of fun. Everybody thinks... Unfortunately, this society has been sold a bill of goods that to eat healthy and to eat a compassionate diet that doesn't involve torturing animals is somehow boring. And it's not. It's a fantastic adventure. Look at this come. lunch. Look, come on, Tony. Totally check it, it out. Love check it. it out. How was your journey to veganism? Well, I was blessed to have a mom who I had a pet pig, she was born in Puerto Rico, and she thought she had a pet pig, but actually it was a food pig. And when she was about six years old, she came home and her pig had been slaughtered, and she fainted, and she shunned meat from that point on. My dad was Irish, he was a big meat eater, but when they met each other, he kind of adopted the diet. So I grew up in a pescatarian household primarily, and then as I became a journalist and was out there reporting, I started finding out about things like pig gestation crates. Pigs! who have a higher IQ than dogs, kept in crates the size of their bodies, never mm -hmm. able to turn around. And so, you know, we have industrialized cruelty in this country and I became you know, morally indignant. And I just said, I don't wanna live in a planet where the sentient beings are treated like things, uh, animals that are just like our beautiful little animals here, um, tortured and it's all legal and nobody says a word because it's hidden behind closed doors. And I said, you know what? I can't sleep at night. I'm gonna devote the rest of my life to changing that. When I got her, she was just on her last legs. In fact, I really thought, is it worth it bringing her to the Wild Bird Fund? Is she gonna die on the way? And it was just, I grabbed a cab and came up here and they said they, they didn't know. I remember Rita said, she's the lady, wonderful woman who runs this a fantastic organization. She said, we don't know if she's gonna make it, but we'll give it a shot and look at her now. Well, for me, I started dating Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I wasn't a big meat eater prior to that. I, I was kind of grossed me out. But when I started dating Jane, um, you know, she's extremely passionate about the subject matter. Um, and so I decided to start researching about animal rights and factory farming because I didn't, I had never been around it. So I researched it and I started watching videos of, you know, what goes on on factory farms and the meat and the dairy industry. Um, I ran across one video in particular called Farm to Fridge. It's a 12 minute video on YouTube that shows you all the different categories, the egg industry, the dairy industry, the pork, the beef, et cetera, chicken, and exactly what happens to get that on your plate. And I never looked back. It was like, okay, I get it now. And I don't want to be a part of it. And I, I don't miss it. I mean, I, there's no way that I could eat meat again or, or dairy after knowing the truth. 
Do you yeah. feel like it's a, like increased your health by being vegan? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because I know I, that there's a lot of like health challenges that can go away by changing diet. Yeah. Yeah. For me, you know, I noticed a big difference because I wasn't a heavy meat eater prior to becoming a vegan, but I did eat a lot of eggs and I ate a lot of dairy, cheese specifically. I noticed after getting rid of the dairy from my diet, a tremendous physical effect that mm -hmm. was much better. Um, I wasn't as lethargic. I had a much stronger stomach. My digestion was better. I mean, it was such a massive effect of just getting rid of, di rid of dairy. And then I later learned that um, dairy is like the number one undiagnosed allergy in humans yeah. because we're not supposed to be drinking cow's milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it all made sense. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do with like animal rescue. And I know you're involved in a lot of like helping animals. Yeah, well, I was a mainstream journalist for 37 years working in corporate media. And um, that was great. And I've also written four books. And, but as I got along in life, and now I'm 60 years old, and I said, you know, there's a point in time where you have to really follow your heart. And uh, I just decided to use the skills that I have as a journalist. I've done live shots all my life. I'm the one standing out there uh, on a snowy night going, you know, there's a makeshift memorial behind me uh, for somebody who's been slain or some tragedy that I was reporting on. I said, let me use these skills to tell the story. Sadly, there's a mainstream media news blackout on animal rights. So what happened was I had a show on HLN, which I was very blessed to do an animal segment every week. Yay. And it was an exception to that news blackout. Donna had given me a GoPro camera for my birthday. And so I said, well, now, you know, I've got free time in my hands. Let's go out and cover some protests. So we started going to animal rights protests after animal rights protests. And we started realizing they were putting these great protests on, but nobody was seeing them. Uh, nobody was documenting them, nobody was distributing them, and the mainstream media wasn't covering them. So I immediately knew I had found my calling, and I started to, uh, we had the GoPro camera and other cameras, but we ended up using our iPhone 6 because it's so good, the quality, especially when you compress it for um, a social media, and we started shooting these stories and editing them uh, as if they were mainstream stories, so that if somebody saw this story, they didn't know if it came from a major network or from Jane Unchained. We have the greatest contempt for the animals who are the smartest, who have learned to live in our midst. So pigeons don't get a lot of respect because they're everywhere, but they're smart because they've managed to live right around us and survive. So we gotta give them some props for that. And I've done hundreds of stories already in the year and a half that I've been doing this with Donna's help. By the way, I could never do it without Donna because about every, five minutes I say Donna it's broken and then one day she informed me because she's a lot younger than me she goes honey that's old people talk for I don't know how to do it oh, so um I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said it's user error user, user error. error but frankly Donna is the smart smart genius behind all of the stuff that we do and that's why we're a great team I mean, you like this Your mouth? Oh my gosh, Ben. Ben is really liking you, Donna. I'm really liking Ben. Aww. I think it's really important to be with somebody whose values match yours, uh, I, uh, who's compassionate, who's caring, mm -hmm. who's about more than just herself and accumulating and getting ahead. And um, that's why I love you, baby. Aww. Um, but anyway, I had found my niche and I found my calling and I said, I want to start doing these stories. And again, we've done hundreds of them. They've been seen by uh, millions of people collectively on Facebook. And I think we're changing, we're changing the world. We've, we've got to do an end run and social media is a way to do an end run around the mainstream media news blackout. And there's a tremendous commonality with the um, LGBTQ movement because um, that movement was also marginalized yeah. until we reached a certain point where we said, hey, we're going to act up. And I do believe that the animal rights movement has taken a page from the gay rights movement and the act up movement in particular. Um, remember the, frame, the famous phrase, silence equals death. Mm -hmm. When people were desperately clamoring for some kind of uh, appropriate government response to the age AIDS crisis. Well, the same thing is happening now with the animal rights movement, where we are using some of the peaceful, nonviolent disruptions that uh, ACT UP used to get our point across, because sometimes you can't get your message across just sitting here and being oh so very polite and asking nicely. When people motivated by greed 
uh, are doing things that are morally uh, incomprehensible and morally bankrupt. You have to stand up. It's not violent, peaceful, nonviolent disruption, which is a hallmark of all great civil rights uh, movements that have brought our world forward. So ACT UP had silence equals death, which certainly applies to animals as well. If we're silent, billions of animals are gonna die. We've also uh, established another phrase, it's not food, it's violence. Our whole thing is how to make quick, um, easy, tasty, vegan food, you know, in a little bit of time. So, let me, can you move this, Jane? Yes, Thank absolutely. You. I'm her sous chef. <laughs> All right, okay, well, I'm gonna need some mitts. This is hot, hot, oh, hot. there's mitts. All right, wait, no, no, I got it, right here. Okay. All right, so. It's not as hot as you, but it's hot. <laughs> If you want to be on the show, contact us and tell us your story.